Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate program. And today, my give them what they want. And that's what I'm going to do because Today, we're doing blind tasting again, and this time, correct me if I'm wrong, we're doing under $10 cabs from different parts of the world? I'm, I'm not even sure. This one's a little weird to me because we planned it a little while ago. Ian, my, I'm a little bit confused to be really honest. I mean, the title will tell you, but I think it's cabs under 10, right? So, we're doing Cabernets, and then I thought to myself, you know, I'm like this authenticity, answer every email, be real, be true kind of guy. And I, the other day, when I was on the beach with Lizzie and Turks and Caicos, I felt, I'm a little bit of a farce. A little bit, because this mod, this is the glass that I use at home most often. These stemless Riedels, I really do. I'm a big, big fan of these glasses, mod. By the way, nobody won this, did they, mod? There was a lot of people close. Should we unveil what was in here? Mm -hmm. The original wristband. Now, mod, what happened? A lot of people just wrote wristband, wristband. right? And one guy wrote the original, the, named them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's give it to that guy. I'm supposed to sign it, right? Yeah. So here, you take over, contact that guy, and I'll sign it. So that's that little contest. And speaking of, con not contest, but tomorrow, one more time, Mott link it up. If you haven't been paying attention, tomorrow's the big Father's Day, Gary Vaynerchuk's 101 Wines giveaway to get the fourth generation. This is first, this is third. Where is the second? Um, generation, the fourth generation wristband. If you're the first person, email fathersday at winelibrary.com. You'll receive from Amazon that you bought it tomorrow on the fourth, and we will send, put your address too. We will send you, you'll be the first and maybe the only people, depending on the run, of uh, the fourth generation wristband, which psst, I heard is a different color. Psst, I'm just saying. Just saying, Mom. So let's get into it. Using the glasses that I normally use, six wines, all under 10 bones. I need a pen, Mott. Give me a pen after you zoom it. Uh, there you go. Now that service. Wine number one. $10 cabs. Now, I like the stemless. I don't know, I just really like it. I really feel like I can do my thing with them and I'm enjoying it. Sniffy sniff. Now I remember, they're from different parts of the world. I remember them being, yeah, they're from different parts of the world. So this is a lot of fun. It's a real battle, like different parts of the world. Cabernets, this first one is very limited on the nose. Ooh, my palate's in good form right now. It's gonna be a good show. I feel very comfortable with my palate is right now. Um, this one is very, very much lacking a nose. I get a little bit of alcohol. I get a little bit of strawberry, but not much else. Let's give it a whirl. By the way, bring it. You can bring Bo Jackson too. Nice. Good fruit, um, very pleasant, but extremely boring, textbook problematic Cabernet to me. You give me one flavor, cherry strawberries, I guess that's two, and you give me oak. Uh, not a lot of oak, not over oaked, but oak. Very basic, extremely boring. I feel like I can get this out of a big Magnum bottle or even box wine. Pfft. And, uh, and I'd be satisfied. So, to me, just a kind of boring effort to start. I don't have much else to say about that wine other than, you know, it's got some fruit, it's not appalling, it's not appealing either. Um, just very basic Cabernet. Actually, it's getting a little bitter, I didn't even finish, so. Not, not even. Not even um, that excited. Wine number two. I didn't have much to say about wine number one, but couldn't even get a nose out of it, my man. Wine number two. Yeah. I did a good job there. Better color than the last wine. Let's see what's going on here. A little sniffy sniff. There we go. A little nose action, a little bit more like a real wine. Good to, good to look, good to see. That's what's good about this Vaniac t-shirt, covers all, it's black. Um, almost 
like a minty component. I get a little bit of a eucalyptus licorice kind of thing going on in the beginning. I do in a big way. As a matter of fact, Ricola! Get a little bit of that Ricola candy. Well, it's not a candy, is it? It's a cough drop. But, you know, kind of like a St. John root, kind of like a very minty, mint, um, grainy, um, rooty, like, like in the woods kind of thing going on. And I like it. I also get a little hint of raspberry, which is always good to see. And a little bit of like, almost like a, um, like a sour, sour, almost like a sweet and sour, what's that, duck sauce, right? Yeah, kind of like that almost. Kind of weird, very interesting nose, showing a lot for a nose that now I know is an under $10 wine. More oomph. I get some black pepper. I also get a very interesting broccoli component, which I like. Great mid palate. It actually has a mid palate. Transitions into a little bit of a finish. Nice textbook stuff. I like this wine. This to me, right off the bat, I know it's under 10 bucks. It's something I think people can wrap their heads around. It's got some graininess, which I like. Almost like grape nut cereal. Matt, you can try it. I saw you eye it up. Um, it's a little bit more real. I'm not so, you know, which I, I, I know how you feel about red wine. It's got some tannins, it's got some bitterness. Um, it's, it's got some backbone. It's got some polish. It's well made. Mm -mm. I don't like caps. I, they're, they're big in tannins. You know, they got the backbone, they got the bitterness. It's hitting the back right here, isn't it? But if you're a Cabernet drinker, we're gonna get Mott eventually into it. We're just gonna keep tasting them on these wines because I'm actually gonna like it. Subtle flavors, I like it. Solid effort, considerably better than the first wine, and we're off and running. Wine number three. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. I think I found my way to pour Mott. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think about football season. Just because you have a Super Bowl ring. You I know, know but I, I put it out of my mind till I don't even get into preseason. Crazy. Sniffy sniff. It's not worth the aggravation. Smell this, Mott. So you want to talk about tomato juice and V8. Isn't that wild? I mean, this is by far the most aromatic wine so far of the bunch. Very New World. Very Australia, South Africa-like. Who likes beet salad? Raise your hand. Just one of us. Um, this wine is rolling with heavy beets. Black cherry too. Mushy black cherry, not the firm kind. I like the firm kind because it's a little more focused. That's that laser down your fruit, you know, the middle of your palate fruit. This is more like the thick, you know, slabby, soft black cherry, which is kind of bleh, bleh. And kind of like, you know, kind of like, you know, when take off the shirt comes out a little bit. Love handles are good though. But anyway, explodes all over every part of your palate, but it's a little sugarfied. This is a little sugarfied, but the beets are beautiful. I like the black pepper. This is a pretty good wine. There's a little bit of like a dirty shoe kind of thing going on here. I'm not kidding. This really tastes like if you smell an old boot. I want to smell my dad's boot, and this is what it smells like. Little boot action, little dirty boot, tomatoes, green peppers, red, dorky kind of cherries. Dorky cherries, what does that mean? Anyway, a lot of flavor though. Unlike wine number one, which was like here. Like, this has a lot of charisma. That's what I like. It's showing a lot of personality. It's an interesting wine. Um, it might not be for everybody, but uh, I think it's a kind of interesting little wine. And again, for a $10 price point or under, uh, a wine that I think a lot of people can wrap their head around. Pretty good. Let's move on. Wine number four. Rinsey rinse. And let's see what's going on here with wine number four. Um, good color. Sniffy sniff. Really nice. Ooh. Really nice balance of like, this almost tastes like, smells like, excuse me, like a raspberry tort. Does that make sense? A raspberry tort? Really, really nice nose. I like the elegance of the fruit. Um, I like the uh, cleansiness. Is that a new, like, new employee, right? Like, I had no idea who that was. 
um, really nice cherries. No, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like a raspberry tort with a cherry on top. It's very clean. There's a little hint of oak, so I'm a little bit concerned right off the bat, to be honest with you. But it's got a nice focus. It's almost got like an evergreen pine needle thing going on, which I like. Very bright fruit. Let's give it a whirl. This I like a lot. Ooh, this would be great for yellowtail drinkers. I'm gonna go with, I mean, I'd be really surprised. If this could only be very hot weather California or Australian cab, in my opinion. It's almost got a little Shiraz kick to it. That's why I'm going Australian on wine number four. Very bright fruit. Um, almost like orange peel, believe it or not, on the tail end and the finish. Good cherries again on this wine as well. Also has a little bit of a, is that a blueberry component? I like the balance of fruit in this. It's got a good, nice taste. Oh, you like this? Mm. Not bad. You like this? That's good to know. I mean, yeah. What's that finish? The finish is kind of tarty, you know? It's kind of like, it's kind of like a sweet tart, right? The finish? Um, or a pop tart. I'm not kidding. Like, you know the middle of a pop tart? Like that, it's like, it's something tart. Yeah, it's tart, not sweet. It's good, I like this wine. This is a good entry level cab. I'm dying to see what this is. Um, I like it, I like it a lot actually. I'm almost Jericho Cotchering it. Jet fans are gonna know what that means. Um, that was pretty good. I like the elegance. That's something I'd love to have with like a beef stew. It's a, I, I love beef stew. And I'm always looking for cabs that got a little more fruit that I, I really find that to be like almost like Yellowtail 2.0. Like I know why people like Yellowtail. A little higher sugar levels, it's smooth, it's easy drinking. But there's so many more interesting complexities out there. To me, this is a, a, a better version. Um, Dying to see what they picked for that. that. That's a good wine. I like that wine. Wine number five. That's a good wine. And wine number four. A little snippy sniff. Do not like this nose already. I like funky stuff. Smell this, Ma. But this is almost like not a pe. <laughs> We should have taped Mott's face. Smell that? Yeah. I mean, this is like rotted wood, um, um, cobwebby, you know, old kitchen. Like, I did a lot of house estate sales, and like, you know, you go into like a home, you know, that's, yeah, this is kind of. I also get like a green leaf kind of component on the back end of the nose, which is kind of interesting, but this is kind of not appealing. It's kind of interesting and I'll, I'll take it for that, but I can see a lot of people not liking this nose. Let's give it a whirl. Next, wine number six. I'll explain wine number five when we unveil it. No, I'll explain it now so they don't think I'm picking on them. I mean, just really an off-balanced wine, poor effort. You know, just like, let's pick as many grapes as we can, clunk them, put them in a barrel, pump them out, sell them, probably marketed well, what have you. I, I don't know, really not a good wine to me in any shape or form um, as I continue to like score it lower in my mind. I'm just not, not feeling it at all. Um, sniffy Sniff wine number six. Much more pleasant. Um, again, creamy uh, on the nose, little fruit that I like. Let's give it a whirl. Good textbook Cabernet. It's what you're looking for, a little cedar box, tobacco on the back end, which I like. More bitter, more, more real than some of the other wines. A very blueprint Cabernet of all the wines. I would have like almost been thrown off and thought maybe this is a Shiraz, for example. Um, it might even be. Ian might be up to a trick. I'm, I'm claiming that if this is a Shiraz, I thought it might be. Wine number six here is much more textbook Cabernet, one I'm much more used to. Solid, reminds me of like the Liberty School wines 
from the last you know five or six years ago, seven years ago when they were really good ten dollar cabs, Bogle Cabernet, seven, eight, nine dollars textbook. It is what it is. You expect to drink Cabernet, you get a little vanilla, you get a little Starbucks mocha chocolate. That's what I'm getting here. Nice solid. Nice solid Cabernet, not doing anything crazy for me, but definitely not um, appalling in any shape or form either. Um, and um, so let's um, let's let's rate them up, Ma. Let's see what we got here. Um, this is the winner. This is in the second, third, fourth. Ta-da! Blind tasting finished. Let's unveil them. Um, but before we do, let me get into a couple things I want to talk about. June 6th, I will be in Chicago at an amazing event called the Seed Conference, an amazing technology event. I will be in Chicago hanging around. Any fans want to get together? Mott, link it up. Follow me on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, Mott, link up to Twitter. You better make some notes. Seedconference.com, I'm almost sure. And Twitter, uh, link those up. I'll be there. Right now, I'm actively, even though I'm here on the show today, I'm in Houston this whole week. Um, at the Houston Wine Festival. Hopefully I'll see you. I'm the wine wizard. Hopefully I'll see you for that. And also, Mott, link up booktour.com. I'm gonna be hitting up Edison, New Jersey on June 11th. All you Jersey heads, all the local people, please come and see me at the Costco in Edison. I'd love to see you. Uh, we can definitely hang out. I don't expect a big crowd, so we can totally chill and do that. I'm gonna be in Maryland June 26th, some other dates, but I wanna do that. Again, we already linked up. Tomorrow is the Father's Day book giveaway for the new wristband. That's gonna be awesome. And let's get into the wines in last place. With a score of 71 points is... Hey Vaniacs, you probably wanna know what the finishing order was, but for various reasons we can't let you know today. Gary's gonna to be back tomorrow with an all new episode and he promises he'll have an explanation. So in the meantime, sorry.